welcome to Acrylic Painting Techniques. We're going to get started right away and do the basic component called a wash. You're going to just get some nice paint. Sometimes I like to mix a gloss medium in it. You can add a little bit of water, but not too much because excess of water does affect the integrity of the paint. Just get a nice layer of paint there and then just go ahead and smooth it right onto your paper or canvas and the goal is to make it nice and even nice and even this is a filbert brush it has a nice rounded tip and it just helps the paint go on very nice and smoothly and there you are this is the building block for a lot of other techniques as we'll see later and it's always a nice feeling to get a nice, even wash on your work. The next technique we are going to look at is the gradient, going from one value to another value. You wanna start out with your lighter value. I'm just gonna put a nice layer of white. Maybe I'll just mix just a ton, touch of yellow in there so you can see what's going on. Nice wash on the top. And I like to make it a little bit thick in the middle because you're going to be adding some paint to that in a moment. And then get your darker value. And you're gonna add that to the bottom. And then you're going to just gently bring that up. Make sure I have enough paint on there. And bring that up into your next tone and then you're just gonna do a little dance in the middle just introduce those two say hello yellow white hello blue and there you go and don't go too high because you want that pure color on the top and the pure color on the bottom and there we go Now we're gonna talk about a technique that's called loaded brush. And so with this technique, you have two colors on a brush. I prefer a nice stiff, um, kind of bristly brush and wide and square. Um, and then to the two colors go on without mixing or blending and you get this nice variegation on your surface. So step one is to get your lighter color and really just load up that side of the brush Okay, and then I'm gonna get green on this side of the brush and nice amounts of paint and then just go for it. You see this nice wide brush. You can go back the way you came, but you don't wanna turn your brush around because part of the beauty of this is the separation of the colors. Loaded brush. Next up is scumbling. Scumbling, isn't that a great word? So this is a very rough texture, which is made with um, kind of, an, again, a stiff brush. Um, a soft brush won't give you the same effect, so a stiff brush is preferred. This is kind of dry brush. You can see some of the paper through it, mixing colors. This is a little bit thicker uh, on top of a wash. Okay, so let's try some scumbling. I'm just gonna start with some red and you kinda wanna make sure you don't have your brush too bloppy because you wanna get some nice, and it makes a fun sound. I think I heard somebody say that when a whole class is scumbling, it sounds like distant thunder. And if this is a really fun way to mix other colors in. all sorts of lovely things with scumbling. A lot of painters, uh, especially in the modern era, really loved the scumbling technique. And you can see, it just has a really nice texture on there. And you can kind of sneak some other things in for texture. Almost kind of like stippling in a way. But there you go. 
got some scumbling. Here are two examples of a translucent application of the acrylic. Um, the gloss medium has been added to it. It creates a nice translucent surface where you can build up some layers. These are mixed colors. This is just a single color with some swirly brushwork. I'm gonna focus on washes, glazes, and translucent brush strokes in this. Um, I have fallen in love with this gloss medium. It is a wonderful additive uh, to put uh, with, mix with your paint. It makes it really, really um, flow nice and smoothly. It doesn't change the color, but it just makes it really, really, really delightful to put on. You all know that I love watercolor, so this kind of reminds me of watercolor in a way. You can see it's just like, it's like honey, it's so lovely. And you can see the paper through it, you can see that. Washes, so kind of translucent. And one of the beauties of this is it's kind of like stained glass where the light is bouncing off the paper and coming back through the color. So it makes it look really rich and vibrant. And you can mix colors right on top of each other with this and have some layering effects. Again, I'm using my filbert, but you could be using any kind of brush, any size. And here we go. Like so. I'm gonna just use a small brush, just, just a smaller brush, just for fun, and just see what it does. Maybe I'll do a little bit of this white and really mix in this glaze. And just see, just do some swirlies some swirlies around there, pick up some of the glaze. So lots of fun, you can have lots of fun with this. Impasto is the Italian word for bread dough, which has not been baked. And so what that means is it's really lumpy and thick and gooey. And this example here shows the texture that you can get when there is impasto. It's a thick layer of paint uh, typically having lots of texture. Vincent Van Gogh, for example, used a lot of impasto. Modern artists use a lot of impasto. It is something that is done to highlight areas often or just to create some really dramatic texture. So for impasto, you can use a really stiff, thick brush, really grab lots of paint on and just like, you know, slather it on like Vincent. Or you can also use a palette knife you can use things like a heavy gel matte medium, which adds even more thickness. You can see how that works. I'm gonna actually maybe mix some blue and red together and get, well, let's see what we'll get here. Maybe I'll grab some white with that and get a really interesting color here. It's kind of purpley and a move, move-ish. All right, and you just go and just lay it on there. You can spread it around. It's kind of like putting frosting on a cake, really. You can grab some more, maybe like that. I'm gonna grab some of this green, maybe put it over here. It's a good, good way to use up all your extra paint on your palette, for sure. Maybe go like this. So it's just really thick. You can push it to the sides. You can kind of carve into it. All sorts of things. But it is raised paint. With lots of texture. Lots of three-dimensionality. There's another Italian word in acrylic painting techniques, and that is called scraffito. And it literally means scratched. So you have a surface of paint that you then scratch into. This was a gradient with some scratches. And then this was this clear gloss put on with some drops of paint and then scratched with the end of a paintbrush. So let's have some fun with some scraffito. So I'm going to get some paint, I think, for this one. I'm just gonna use some pure blue and just put a touch of white in it. 
I'm going to paint this on kind of a thick wash. And what's fun about Scraffito is right now this paint is staining the surface of the paper, paper canvas, uh, blue. And when I scratch through, it's gonna look blue. And here it's gonna look red when it scratches through. So if I were to, you wanna get some of this off and just get a bunch of white on top. If I were to put a bunch of white over this, when I scratch through, guess what color we're gonna see? Yep, we're gonna see some blue. So, all right, let's, uh, let me just do one more thing down here, just for fun. And I am putting this on pretty thick as you can see. All right, and then you can um, do, use all sorts of things. You can use the backside of a brush. You can use forks. You can use um, uh, toothpicks, Any, anything. Anything works, but I love these clay tools. Um, they have these rubber tips. They come in all sorts of different sizes. Um, you could also use, um, you know, texture tools from uh, from the ceramic area. So, scraffito. So now I am just going to. Um, I like to wipe the tip off from time to time, and just have some fun with scraffito. Okay, grab a rag here. Uh, this is kind of like writing, so you can draw into this, you know, you could do faces or like some kind of whatever subject you are drawing. You could do writing uh, with Scraffito. So again, it's a lot like just having some kind of a writing implement uh, in your hand. And there we go, we have some Scraffito. Guess which one of these brushes made this texture? Yep, you're right, the fan brush. It is a marvelous brush for doing all sorts of subtle textures like feathers and hair and fur and grass and uh, in just abstract shapes like on this one. And what you do is you get your brush uh, loaded with paint and not too much paint. This is the trick. Too much paint and the effect is ruined and you can kind of even separate the brushes a little bit. And then I just love doing circles and spirals. They're one of my favorite shapes anyway. And so you can see I'm really just almost dry brushing it. You can get just nice wispy, wispy marks. And I really separated these brushes, uh, you know, the bristles apart, but you don't have to. These are really wanting to, ooh, look at, let's see what happens that time. Like that. Uh, I want to get it a little bit more even this time. Okay. All right. There we go. So this is the fan brush. Get lots of. You can you can see the uses for this right away. And this is something that you want to use a very delicate touch with. Okay, so I know y'all like to drip and splatter, and it just so happens that uh, Golden, and probably other brands too, make a paint, it's called High Flow Acrylics. And so um, you've probably seen lots of the pore paintings, um, of course, Jackson Pollock splatter paintings and drip paintings, and this is specially formulated or to just kind of drip on all sorts of beautiful ways, creating all sorts of little dots and splatters. Um, this I put onto this surface using the palette knife. And again, it was just like using frosting and created this design and then I had to let it dry thoroughly. So now it's all crispy. And now I'm going to paint it. And I am really, really excited to do that. So first I'm gonna get some paint here and I've got a little bit of that gloss medium, which I love so much, uh, in there. And I'm just gonna start at the, edge of the edges of the petals here. 
and just start painting inwards and I can just see and feel, it just feels like I am painting an actual flower because of this lovely texture. And it's almost like, like modeling paste or, or clay, like you've created a low relief sculpture on the surface of your paper. So I'm just going to uh, take the paint in here and then I'm gonna do some, got a little bit of gloss on there and I'm gonna go outwards with the white and get that blended. Lots of fun there. Maybe some more than others. I'm just gonna just do a little fun here. And it really is fun painting on a 3D surface like this. Um, I can even just Paint on the tips if I wanted to of these little mountains. Get a little bit extra definition there. And I'm going to just get a little color on the middle here, just so I get a little contrast of that. Maybe a little touch of green, like so. And then I could also just do the background. excited to see what this material does. It's new to me. It's called glass bead gel, clear acrylic gel with small glass beads. And so I have split this canvas paper square in half and I painted some of this on earlier and it's dry and I can see that there is um, kind of a beady texture. It's almost like little teeny little silicone beads or something on there and I'm going to see what happens when we paint over dry and then I'm gonna see what happens when we mix some of this into the paint. So first let's try just getting a little mixture going here and I have not used enough orange today and I love orange. So I'm gonna see what happens when we paint on top of it and you can definitely clearly see um, a really cool texture. Um, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of, but almost maybe like toast, like the surface of toast. And I don't know if the glass beads are gonna show up or not through there. I feel like I want a little bit more fluidity, so I'm gonna add some of my favorite stuff, yes, that gloss medium, and mix that into there so I can get a little bit more into these, oh yeah, there we go more into these nooks and crannies. And just for fun, let's just see what happens when I mix some other colors in there. So you can see that there's definitely some texture there. All right, so now what happens if we mix some of this in with some paint here? So I'm just gonna blop that on there, set that aside and mix some of this in. And you can see the lumpiness right away. And it almost feels like that impasto. And there we go. And so we'll just have to see what happens when this dries. I can see that I really need to kind of just plop it on and to spread it around. But there's, I, I can make it really smooth by spreading it thin or get it all lumpy and thick by kind of Popping it on like that. So we shall see what happens. And I'm just gonna plop it on. So this is kind of kind of like impasto, isn't it? But with definitely a graininess. So we shall see if when it's dry, if it looks nice and shiny. I don't know if it will or not. So glass bead gel. Last, but certainly not least, we've come to my favorite new technique, which is called image transfer. Um, with this process, you can take images from magazines 
or you can take images and put them on a copier, color copier or black and white. As long as it has toner, it will work great. Um, so that's like the copier up at the front office or the back office. And what you're gonna do is you are going to paint on soft gel gloss. Um, it also comes in a matte, but I am preferring the gloss for this project. And what you do is you're gonna take your image and you will take the gloss. I'm gonna move everything up a little bit so you can see this. And you are simply going to paint some of this gloss onto the image. Okay? And nice smooth coats. And you're gonna let it dry. And then you're gonna put another coat on. And you want to do probably about four, maybe five coats, okay? Boom, and then you're gonna let it dry. And of course, I just so happen to have a piece that I had uh, covered earlier and it is ready to go. It's got about four coats on it. And I cut it, okay? This is uncut and then cut. And I am going to put it in a container of water and just let it soak for a minute. You see the water right away going into the paper. And then you're going to gently this needs a little moment, another moment. You're going to peel the paper off the back. It just falls right off. And what's left is the acrylic or the medium, the gel. And it is an acrylic gel. And it has turned into plastic, basically. And that plastic has been stained with the printing ink. All right, and now we're going to remove the paper. And the image is going to stay on the gel. And you can see it coming right off and you wanna keep getting all the little fibers off of it. I have to say that magazine images work much better um, with the paper, with the printed paper. Um, I have noticed there's a little bit of a haze that remains, whereas with the magazine images, and uh, we'll, we'll do a little comparison in just a sec, um, much more clarity with the gel. It, dry, it dries a lot more crystal clear, whereas with the printed image it's just a slight there's just slightly milky I would say there's a slight op opacity not as transparent so when you take it out you're just gonna set it down and just dry it off All right and if it folds over flip it back over there we go All right. okay and so this is going to be ready to glue and I've already decided I've been working on my composition a little bit before the film and it's gonna go right there. It can go either direction, okay? This was the direction that the paper was on and then this was the direction of the glaze. So this was one that was from a magazine image and you can still see that it is really pretty clear all the way through. This one a little, not so much. This one, not so much. So you can see the difference, a lot more clarity. So now, you're ready to start assembling. So a few of these are already glued down, but I know that I'm gonna put my tentacles up there, sand dollar here, and I'm gonna put my scene of Seattle. This is Puget Sound, which I accidentally glued upside down, so if you're noticing that it's upside down, that you are correct. And then here, of course, is Lake Union and the Space Needle, and it's gonna go just about right there. And this, again, was from a magazine image. And even though it has color on it, it is very transparent. You can see my fingers through it, right? So I'm gonna use that gel medium again. Get my brush nice and dry. So I don't wanna add water when I'm gluing it down. And you can glue it down with the gel medium. So everything is very compatible here. And of course, I have my canvas board uh, prepared already with some color, some base color. And I'm going to just start gluing these guys on. Okay, and so it's gonna go right there. And I wanna make sure that I get everything down really well. It feels like there isn't enough glue underneath or gel underneath, just go ahead and glue that down. Nice thing about it being transparent, you can tell if it's glued down or not. All right. Okay, so that's one. And then I'm going to put this over here. Okay, like so. And then I'm gonna put my octopus tentacles up here, like so. 
stick this all down. So this is all I'm going to do for this step to show you image transfer. All right. Um, and I will probably, when it's dry, go over the whole thing again with another uh, coat of the gloss. All right. Let me stitch that up. And I just want to show you a close-up of how cool that looks. image transfer using soft gel gloss. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all of these techniques that we've gone through from the basic simple ones to the more fancy uh, special products and I can't wait to see what you do with these techniques in class. Thanks for watching.